o'clock uh, in uh, to help uh, Katarina's club and uh, the show to teach all those kids. And tonight from the Jim Conway show, he'll be at the Anaheim White House broadcasting. So uh, please go to pastathon.com and see how you can help and just hang out if you want at the Anaheim White House. Uh, tomorrow, the Supreme Court is going to hear arguments in uh, a very important case, Dobbs versus Jackson uh, Women's Health Organization. And this is about the Mississippi law uh, that uh, the governor signed, and it's all about overturning Roe v. Wade. And uh, this is uh, Mississippi that uh, passed the law, which the governor signed instantly, saying that no abortion is allowed after the 15th week of pregnancy, where in reality it really is the 13th week, because they go back to the first day of the menstrual period, that was missed, and there's a little complication, but it's effectively 13 weeks. Uh, by the way, Texas just passed the law, as you know, the governor signed after six weeks before women know, even know they're pregnant for the most part, and making abortion illegal. So uh, this case uh, is the first case explicitly asking the court to overrule uh, Roe since Justice Amy Coney Barrett's appointment. The Republicans or the anti-abortion folks have a supermajority on the court. And remember, this comes three months after the court allowed that Texas law to stay in place pending a full hearing, which uh, has never happened after that. So are we going to hear, will the court come down, probably in June, uh, with uh, five words, Roe v. Wade is overruled? No. No. First of all, the decision is procedurally wrong, or procedurally improper if that was to happen. When the court announces it's going to give a case full briefing, oral arguments, etc., it announces which legal questions it's going to resolve in that case. And this is not about Roe v. Wade. It's whether all pre-viability prohibitions on abortions are unconstitutional. So that's the question. It's are these laws, they don't overturn Roe v. Wade, uh, they just make it impossible to have for a woman to have an abortion practically. Uh, for example, uh, in 2016, Texas, uh, there were architectural requirements on abortion clinics. In other words, uh, an abortion, outpatient abortion clinic, which most of them are, uh, had to have the same requirements as a hospital. Didn't have that with, didn't, for any other procedure, you could have uh, gastric bypass, you could have knee surgery, repl uh, joint replacement more dangerous, far more implications or complications than abortion, but the Texas legislature said, okay, you have to have all of these requirements as to the facility. Oh, yeah, no doctor can perform an abortion if the, the abortion, uh, if the doctor uh, does not have privileges at a hospital within 30 miles. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, also uh, the woman has to be within 30 miles in terms of, 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 a, um, of a hospital, just in case. I mean, it went on and on and on. So what it basically said was, we're going to make it so difficult to have an abortion, but still, Roe v. Wade is not going to be overturned. You're not going to hear right on, I mean, the court could do that, but I don't think you're going to hear it, because uh, they, they don't have to worry about it. If they make it impossible and still give lip service to Roe v. Wade, they've done it all. Uh, so uh, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see the court upholding every single restriction uh, to make sure that a woman doesn't undergo an abortion or can't undergo an abortion. Uh, by the way, the Texas law is very interesting. It doesn't make it criminal. Uh, it stayed away from that. Uh, what it said was anybody can sue an abortion provider or an ab abortion a better for $10,000 statutorily $10,000, which means the taxi driver, the Uber driver delivering a woman to the hospital, uh, the private ambulance uh, company delivering a woman if a woman is in serious, it has serious complications. Uh, it's kind of crazy, uh, but that's how they got around it. And will that be upheld? Of course it will be. I mean, it doesn't stop a woman from having an abortion. Uh, all it says is if, uh, and by the way, she doesn't get sued. It's everybody around her who gets sued and gets hit with $10,000. Hey, you can still do it. 
but practically speaking, no one's going to do it. Doctor can go to jail for doing it. Hey, she can undergo an abortion. She will put the doctors in jail. Well, but Roe v. Wade is still being upheld. That's the way they're going to do it. You're not going to see an overturn. At least I don't think so of Roe v. Wade. Uh, you know why? Because the courts don't like overturning basic constitutional decisions. Uh, that are made by a previous court. There's something called stare deci de decisis. And what that means is uh, the court let stand in place uh, decisions that were made, but it could easily, effectively overturn Roe v. Wade, especially with a Republican supermajority with the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who of course was uh, abortion rights advocate, and uh, Anthony Kennedy, who was a swing vote. There are no swing votes anymore. Now it's all conservative, supermajority conservative. Coming up, a California town has declared itself a constitutional republic. And we'll go through it a little bit. I mean, it's kind of stupid, but there's a point to it. And I'm going to share with you what uh, the city council and mayor of Oroville did and why they did it. It's a constitutional republic. Okay, what is it, a town of 2,000 people? Sure. This is KFI AM 640. Let's check in with uh, Jennifer. A mayor in the Bay Area has changed course when it comes to fighting crime. Oakland Mayor Libby Schatz says she wants to reverse plan cuts to police funding and instead push to hire more officers as soon as possible. She made the announcement yesterday after another weekend of fatal shootings in her city. 127 homicides have been reported in Oakland so far this year. Staff says she will ask the city council to reverse the plan to divert $18 million to diversion efforts. Deborah Mark, KFI News. News is brought to you by Reuter Hero. Officials with the ports of L.A. and Long Beach have once again extended the deadline to remove cargo containers from docks and terminals. Companies now have until December 6th to remove their containers or face fees of up to 100 bucks per container per day. Since the fees were announced on October 25th, there's been a 37% reduction in the number of containers at both ports combined. This is the third extension since the fees were announced. The House Committee investigating the attack on the Capitol is set to vote on whether to hold a former Justice Department official in contempt of Congress. For refusing to answer questions about what he did before and after the January 6th attack on the Capitol, that vote will be similar to what the House did with former Trump advisor Steve Bannon. ABC's Andy Field says Jeffrey Clark worked for the Justice Department during the Trump administration. Clark allegedly helped push claims of election fraud to try and overturn the results of the 2020 election. The contempt vote is set for Wednesday. A member of New Zealand's parliament has given birth to her second child, and she got to the hospital Sunday by riding her bicycle. Julianne Gettner also cuddled to the hospital when she gave birth the first time around. And New York is taking steps to clear up hospital space ahead of a predicted spike in COVID-19 cases this winter. Beginning on December 3rd, uh, elective procedures at these short-staffed hospitals will cease, and we'll reassess that again January 15th. Governor Kathy Hochul says COVID cases are already starting to increase in the state, and there are expected to be even more people as they return from their Thanksgiving travels. Hochul declared a state of emergency last week in an effort to get more resources to prepare for the winter surge. <laughs> in Northern England may have felt like forever to dozens of people who went to see an Oasis tribute band. The weather was bad Friday, but not enough people to keep an Oasis off stage. As the band finished its set and people got ready to leave, officials said there was so much snow it wasn't safe to drive. So that night turned into two and then to three. The pub's manager organized movies, a quiz night, and karaoke for the stranded customers. People were finally dug out yesterday. We're taking a look at your drive now. Low clouds. It looks like the ball that you're driving through. <laughs> well, that's for sure. Most of the sudden half of the basin. But boy, we just got over a really bad problem, and we could just barely see this because it's at the edge of the uh, low clouds that cover most of the basin. But it's southbound 605 in between Beverly and Whittier as they speak to you. All lanes have been shut down. Now there's a rig fire still blazing away. Fire department just arrived about 30 seconds ago. They're putting water on real quick. A lot of white smoke coming up, but there's still a, a large uh, fire going on between the cab and the box and hill. So again, South 605, South Beverly, all lanes are shut down. Boy, Southbound 605 just absolutely stopped. It's always busy, but coming down from the Pomona Freeway, I do mean stop. Uh, using road speed in between the 6 and the I-5 right now is pretty good. 
uh, Workman Mill on the other side of the 605. If you can get on, if you can get on the South 605 at Whittier, you're south of the problem and on your way. Oh boy, here's another fire engine pulling up right now. Yeah, we still got all lanes blocked here, southbound 605 and between Beverly and uh, Whittier. Now coming out here, we had a look at the 60 going west from the 605. Pro DCLA, that wasn't too bad at all. And around downtown Los Angeles, just kind of slow moving traffic. More on the 605 coming up. Injured in an accident, visit Superwoman, superlawyer.com. Jeff Fong, AFI in the sky. Former Dodger free agent Corey Seager has signed with the Texas Rangers. It's a 10-year, $325 million deal. Pitching ace Max Scherzer went to the Mets. And rumors are swirling that Clayton Kershaw might join Seager with the Rangers if he doesn't stay in L.A. The freeway freeze gets underway at 7.30. The L.A. Kings host the Anaheim Ducks on the ice. L.A., couple of notches below Anaheim in the Pacific Division. You can listen to this matchup live through the iHeartRadio app. I'm Wayne Resnick, KFI Sports. If you thought you missed the lowest mortgage rates in history, you're in luck because they're back. Mortgage rates are near historic lows again. So if you have a mortgage, refinance it and forget it. You'll never have to worry about refinancing again. Network Capital Funding is offering a low 15-year fixed rate at 1.75% with a 1.94 APR. Incredible! Network Capital has built a reputation for saving people time and money with our unique process that's fast, simple, and secure. Our 15-year fixed rate is 1.75% with a 1.94 APR. Now, second chances don't come often, and you may never see these rates again. So, refinance it and forget it. That's a 15-year fix at 1.75%. Yes, 1.75% with a 1.94 APR. Call the experts at Network Capital now. Call 800-500-NUMBER-1-HIT. 800-501-HIT. As in home run, call now and save big on your refi. 800-500-1-HIT. 800-500-1448. Not licensed in all states. Visit nlfconsumeraccess.org. Licensed by the California Department of Financial Protection and Innovation. Under the financing law. Number 6 0 3 7 8 opportunity lender. Rates subject to change and may not be available to pay law. Discount points may apply. Subject to credit approval. Call 800-500-1448. So, yeah, weather from KFI, mostly sunny today, but that mid to upper 60s at the beaches, mid 70s, low 80s for Metro LA and OC, low to mid 80s for the valleys and the IE. We leave local, live from the KFI 24 hour newsroom. I'm Jennifer Jones Lee. This is your moment. Your moment to stand strong for your family, because your loved one in the military stands strong for our country. Paid Family Leave can now provide military families with up to eight weeks partial wage replacement to help arrange for child care while your loved one is deployed, to be there to dry tears, to be there to provide reassurances, and to be there for the moments that truly matter. This is your moment. Take it. To learn more, visit CaliforniaPaidFamilyLeave.com. Moments matter. Before COVID-19, we used to worry whether our kids would make friends at school and learn new things. Now, we worry whether they'll be safe and how they will adapt to so many changes. No matter what your concerns are, CalHOPE can help with free emotional support resources. Call 833-317-4673 or live chat at calhope.org today. I'm attorney Darren Cavanoke from 1-800-NO-CUPS. Can you do the alphabet backwards? Z, Y, X, W, V, yeah. Try doing that by the side of the road. So if you get pulled over, don't wing it. Call us at 1-800-NO-CUPS. Termite problems? Search PacificCoastTermite.com or call 800-PACIFIC. Publix provides more than 25,000 meals a week to kids in Southern California. Stop into any smart and final location to donate to the KFI Pasta Bond. KFI AM640. More stimulating talk. Good morning, Bill Handel here. It is a uh, Tuesday morning, November 30th. Tonight, uh, Pasta Bond. Uh, we continue on with uh, helping the kids, uh, Katarina's Club, feed the kids. Uh, Tim Conway Jr. is broadcasting from the Anaheim White House from 6 to 10 p.m. Uh, go there, enjoy. By the way, have dinner there, too. Uh, it's uh, a pretty phenomenal place to eat, Chef Bruno. Uh, weird story that I want to share with you. Uh, it actually isn't. Uh, at first, it's ridiculous. Uh, this is Oroville, California. Small town, maybe 20,000 people. And the vice mayor, Scott Thomas Thompson, uh, was so upset with uh, the governor's mandate requiring school kids to be vaccinated. Uh, he said, that's it, final straw. 
Uh, because uh, Thompson believes the government has no right to tell him what to put into his or his children's bodies. Uh, and a, a lot of people in Oroville agree. So uh, he's uh, bitching and moaning and uh, clearly disagrees with everything the government is doing. And that's, you know, there are people that do that. Uh, matter of fact, I think the strongest argument people have is the constitutionality. Although they're wrong, uh, the government does have the ability to mandate, and this is the state, uh, it says, yeah, we can do it. And that's been upheld by the Supreme Court back at the turn of the last century during a smallpox epidemic. Uh, so here's an argument. He says, okay, I don't think the government has the right to do that. Solid argument. Uh, again, uh, I think they're wrong. So uh, what he did, uh, well, what he helped do is uh, create a ordinance where Oroville declared itself a constitutional republic. Here's a quote. Any executive orders issued by the state of California or by the United States federal government that are overreaching or clearly violate our constitutional protected rights will not be enforced by the city of Oroville against the citizens. Of course, that's ridiculous. Uh, a, a city doesn't have the right to say, we will interpret the Constitution. Forget about the courts. Forget about the government. We'll make that decision. Well, I mean, of course. I mean, that's stupid on its face. But it's not that stupid because what he said, the desire here is dialogue. That's why we did this. Not to really declare ourselves uh, a constitutional republic. Clearly, that's just dumb. But... Let's get the conversation started. And boy, did it work, uh, because not only was uh, the story of Oroville covered nationally, I'm doing a whole segment on it. I'm doing a whole segment basically to say he's got a point if he wants to start a dialogue. And I think a lot of people who have a problem with the mandate and with the vaccine in general uh, have to separate themselves from the crazy folks. Uh, all the way from so the DNA, the government is taking our DNA crap, uh, all the way to it hasn't been tested enough, even though a billion people, more than a billion people, have gotten the vaccine. Uh, and the complication rate is ridiculous. And just, uh, let's talk about, oh, it hasn't been around long enough. Okay, so tell me how long enough is. No one, no one has yet to give me an answer on that one. But is it legal for the government to mandate? Well, actually, it is, but uh, there's an argument, much like the abortion argument. Uh, it's a legitimate argument on both sides, no question about it. And so uh, this is a declaration uh, that stands for freedom, according to a lot of people there. Uh, it's, uh, by the way, this is a purple area uh, in the state. Uh, other people in town saw it as just a reckless tantrum uh, because of the ongoing pandemic. 73,000 Californians have died. And now let's go, where is Oroville? It's in Butte County, population of 220,000. One of the state's lowest vaccination rates. 47% fully vaccinated compared with 64% in all of California. And to give you an idea, now we're going into, gee, let's get vaccinated, let's not. Uh, Butte County's largest hospital has averaged 26 patients over the last week. Uh, there is one hospital in L.A. County that has done more than that. L.A. County is home to 10 million people. Butte County is home to 220,000 people. And every hospital uh, in L.A. County but one has fewer patients uh, that have uh, contracted the disease. Uh, and this is one of the growing number of rural communities to label itself a sanctuary uh, or a place otherwise exempt. Needles, you ever go to Las Vegas, you go through Needles, if you take, I think, the 15. It became a sanctuary city for the Second Amendment. Uh, rebuking, say no to California's gun control laws. Well, I mean, you really can't do that. Uh, Atwater and Coalinga, all of this is in Central Valley. Uh, last year, declared, them, declared themselves a sanctuary city for business. And uh, this has to do uh, where the town declares all businesses essential, and they said we are not part of uh, the state, uh, the program. Uh, they lost emergency COVID funding, by the way, while they were doing that. And I bet you the people are just thrilled with that one. I sure would be. 
And as I said, it, it's, uh, Orville's the county seat of Butte County. Uh, it's purple. 36% of voters are Republicans. 35 are registered Democrats. 20 are independents. The county voted for President Trump in 2016 by a small margin and voted for Biden this last election by a small margin. However, uh, the Butte County was uh, largely supporting the recall of Matt. So while COVID rates are going down in LA and San Francisco, the most uh, inoculated, vaccinated area of California, guess what's happening in Butte and other rural areas? Uh, what do you think? Uh, the, the COVID rates have remained relatively high. So just wanted to share with you, uh, and uh, the mayor, Thompson, or the vice mayor, said, uh, we want to have a conversation. Okay, let's open it up. And I think logic prevails unless you're dealing with people that don't look at logic, don't look at science. Uh, and there's the proof. I mean, right there. There are the numbers. You can't argue with that. All right, we're in the Zoom era where we're having those Zoom uh, conversations and meetings. How to build stronger relationships. And by the way, uh, the way to build it, there's one, the major way to build it, according to researchers, and there's a lot of science here, you will never get. Guarantee you'll never get the number one way to really build relationships. Hug more. Uh, it's, high, it's hard to hug when you're on Zoom. You hug the screen. Yeah. Kiss to the screen. Wow. No, that's not the answer. Jennifer, would you like to give us some news? All right. It looks like President Biden's ready to release more emergency oil reserves to lower gas prices. The nation's top global energy security advisor says that'll happen again if the need arises. A mandatory ban on burning wood indoors and outdoors has been extended through tonight because of a high forecast of air pollution. The South Coast Air Quality Management District says the ban affects the South Coast Air Basin, which is non-desert portions of Riverside, San Bernardino, and L.A. counties, as well as all of O.C., and Michigan Wolverines coach Jim Harbaugh is stepping up to help his athletic department staffers who had to take a pay cut during the COVID-19 pandemic. He got a $500,000 bonus for winning the Big Ten East and gave it all to the staffers. We're looking at your ride with DKFI in the sky next. Rates subject to change without notice. Certain restrictions and minimum loan amount requirements apply. 60% LTV and 625 score. Subject to credit approval by refinancing your existing loan. Your total finance charges may be higher over the life of the loan. NMLS 3290. Loans made arranged pursuant to California financing law license. Number 6036970. Equal housing number. We ask for a holiday song. With a brand new sparkly rate. You got a new home loan. That's really, really great. In California, your bank account is bright. What fun it is to save, save, save with Intello Loan Refise. Call Home Loan, call Home Loan, the 1.99 rate. Oh, what fun it is to save, call Intello Loan today. Lock in a 1.99% fixed rate in APR. That's just 1.99%. Call Intello Loan at 800-918-6200. That's 800-918-6200. 800-918-6200. Or visit IntelloLoan.com. Intel alone. Borrowed smart. Staples Connect has full savings on the hottest holiday tech. Right now, on Lenovo iPad 5E with Intel i7 processor is just $49.99. On 6 4 5 one
To make it just a Never upholstery. Never upholstery. Never upholstery. Racing stadiums, walk dispatchers, and pacer films. The foreign finishes are recorded. Precisely rendered creases and character lines to find the elegant exterior. From the integrated LED indicators and up its headlights, back to the crisply executed taillights, the Z4 communicates athleticism and poise. Wheels measuring either 18 or 19 inches in diameter furnish the chiseled fender arches, gluing the Z4 to the pavement. Experience sensational Napa leather upholstery on available M Sport seats with high performance bolsters. Crank up the volume on the premium audio system or take advantage of Bluetooth smartphone integration. Optional navigation keeps you on the intended course and comprehensive safety, including active knee protection, ensures a secure driving experience. Power is derived from a 300 horse turbocharged inline six cylinder engine attached to a standard six speed manual transmission. The optional seven speed dual clutch gearbox shifts manually with the steering wheel controls or the gear selector lever. Adaptive M suspension reduces ride height to enhance control and agility. Perfection meets precision. The 2011 BMW Z4 S-Drive 35i delivers the optimal blend of sporty dynamics, passenger comfort, 
and intriguing style. I don't know.
Yes, you put it. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, crap. 